Okay, this is weekly challenge number three for the week of February 15th, 2021. Uh, being challenge number three, this one is actually quite a bit more difficult than the first two. What we're doing here is we're taking a two-dimensional list, um, or you know, you can also call it a list of lists. Um, and it being two-dimensional, you can sort of talk about it having sort of axes. So a horizontal axis would be uh, talking about uh, you know, the, the rows of this two-dimensional array or two-dimensional list. And then the vertical axis would be talking about the columns. Uh, and so another sort of term we can give this two-dimensional list is a matrix, right? This is a, a two-dimensional array of numbers. Now, uh, I guess one small detail here is that the number of lists or number of sublists is equal to the number of elements in each sublist. So that's just saying, you know, if there are three elements in a sublist, that means that there's going to be three sublists. Uh, and these are going to be regular structures. We don't have to worry about, you know, a list of three and then a list of two or whatever. Uh, so these are actual matrices. Uh, and, and specifically, they're square matrices. So if you're not familiar with matrices, um, Definitely take your time uh, to to you know familiarize yourself with the very basic ideas of um, uh, of matrices because you're going to be needing to do that. Uh, you're going to use matrices quite a lot as a data scientist. So anyway, um, yeah. So we have a matrix, and we can talk about sort of the axes of the matrix, where again the horizontal axis. Uh, is referring to kind of looking across from left to right uh, and then the vertical axis is looking sort of down uh, from top to bottom uh, and another way we can think of that is talking about the rows versus talking about the columns of the matrix so what we're doing here is we're going to sort either by row or by column and either in ascending or descending order now the first two cases l and r uh, these are sorting each row in ascending or descending order, respectively, uh, and that's pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define our, um, well, first I'm going to make uh, our matrix here, So because I'm going to be printing this quite often. Uh, you know what? I'm going to make a little helper function, print matrix going to take a matrix as an ex, uh, as a uh, uh, argument and for row in matrix just print the row okay so the first thing I could do is just run this and make sure I actually also call print matrix on the matrix I defined okay so we're just getting you know kind of a nice little printout here so we can talk about the matrix um, so yeah I'm gonna leave those up there and now we're going to define our sort by direction um, a function, which is going to take a matrix and a direction to sort. Now, you know the challenge says use seq and direct uh, for your parameter names, but those are just suggestions. Um, and I'm going to be a rebel and use some, I think, in my opinion, a little bit more descriptive variable names here. Um, <clears throat> so this is making it clear that we're dealing with a multi-dimensional list uh, where the uh, each sublist is the same length essentially, and that's that's what it means to be a valid matrix. Um, okay. Uh, the first thing I want to do is figure out whether or not I need to reverse my sorting, uh, and the easiest way to do that is to assign uh, basically a boolean value to this to this variable here rev for short for reverse and the boolean value is going to be this boolean expression right here uh, let's see r and d are the two uh, direction codes that we need that we need to uh, consider when reversing so reversing uh, with the this code, this direction code R means, you know, go descending order by row or sort each row by descending order. And then uh, direction code D is sort each column in descending order. Uh, so these two R and D are the two uh, direction codes where 
reverse will be true. So I can use direction in uh, this string R or D, and if it's if direction is either R or D, reverse will be true. Otherwise, it'll be false. Okay. Now what I want to do is figure out whether or not I'm doing an L or R sort or a U or D sort. So L or R are both sorting the rows of the matrix. Uh, and then U and D are sorting the columns. And that's where things are going to get really tricky. Uh, and so we're going to take care of this sort of more straightforward case first, L and R. So if direction in LR. And I'm, the reason I can do this is because direction, we are expecting it or assuming it's going to be a single character and it's only ever going to be either L, R, U, or D. So we're making some assumptions. We're taking that kind of for granted here. Uh, in the real world, you know, you might need to deal with some more uh, or come up with a little bit more robust a solution where you don't run into errors uh, but for this one again you know it's a learn challenge we're giving you you know uh, we're not throwing any curveballs in the unit tests uh, that we throw at you um, so yeah we can just say direction is either going to be one of those four characters and if it's if it's either of these two characters we're sorting uh, the matrix uh, by their rows and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to return a function call to a call a function that I have not yet defined and it's gonna be called row sorter so let's go ahead and define that function it's just gonna be a helper function and you'll see why I'm doing this in a, in, in a couple of minutes here apologies this is gonna be a longer video uh, again because it's a, a more complicated um, challenge Okay, so row sorter should take a matrix and uh, this Boolean value reverse, uh, which determines whether or not to, to sort these, these rows in reverse. And all we're going to do is accumulate into a result for row in matrix result.append uh, sorted row where reverse is equal to rev. So it's either going to be true or false. Uh, and we're just appending each row of this matrix uh, in sorted form into this new matrix here, uh, result. All right, so let's talk about our matrix here. Uh, if we sort this uh, using the code L, it's going to sort each row in ascending order. So we should expect this first row to be 1, 2, 5, the second row to be 2, Eight, nine, and the third row to be one, three, seven. And, whoops, I need to pass rev as our argument there. Um, else, for now, I'm just going to pass, and I'm going to sort by direction the matrix that we have defined up here. And just show you that everything seems, oops, one positional argument matrix, uh, direction, obviously. L. And I guess I do also want to print the matrix that this function is going to return. So we have something nice to look at. More errors. What am I doing wrong now? Well, that shouldn't have happened. Okay. Very bizarre. Anyway, we get uh, the expected output, 1, 2, 5, 2, 8, 9, and then 1, 3, 7. Okay, and then if we do uh, direction code R here, we'll see that we get you know those rows, but sorted in, in uh, descending order. So that's excellent. But now we have to deal with the, the, the much more difficult case, which is sorting by column. And you notice here that these are all sublists. They're sort of uh, isolated objects here. Each of these lists is a self-contained object. And so if I were to say, let's sort this in ascending order by column, well, the first column should be 1 to 9. Uh, and so you can say, well, okay, so this one should come up here, and the two should come down here, and then this nine should come down to, to the bottom row. But the second column here is already sorted in 
ascending order, 127. And so what that means is that you are essentially taking this one and removing it from its home and putting it in into an entirely different sublist. Uh, and that's what makes this challenge so tricky is because now we're sort of swapping elements between different sublists uh, and might sort of sound simple just saying, yeah, oh, we're just swapping elements between sublists. But actually implementing that is really not trivial. It's, it's, it's very tricky. And so what I'm going to show you is um, a technique that is going to actually make this trivial um, because what I just talked about is not trivial uh, but the technique I'm going to show will make it trivial so what we need to do first is uh, I'm going to define another function here and what this function does is take a matrix and return the matrix as transpose or the transpose of the matrix uh, and if you're not sure what a transpose is, maybe do a quick little Google search. Um, you definitely want to know what a transpose is. Uh, and for those who don't know, a transpose takes uh, all of the off-diagonal elements and uh, swaps them sort of across the main diagonal. Uh, that's kind of like the, the worst way I can explain it, and then I'll explain it a, a nicer way. Uh, first, so the main diagonal, some terminology. The main diagonal is uh, the elements along the uh, diagonal uh, that is made when you sort of draw a line from the top left to the bottom right corner of the matrix. So our main diagonal is 2, 2, 3. And when you swap elements across, or when you swap off diagonal elements, so off diagonal elements refer to these, which are not on the main diagonal. When you swap off diagonal elements, um, you are taking sort of corresponding off, di uh, off diagonal elements and, and swapping them. So one and nine get swapped. Uh, this five and this one get swapped. And then this seven and this eight get swapped. So you can sort of think of taking uh, the whole matrix and sort of rotating it around that diagonal, uh, that, that main diagonal. And uh, the much simpler explanation is that you're turning the rows of the original matrix into the columns of the transposed matrix. Or in other words, or another way to say that is that you're taking the columns of this original matrix and you're turning them into the rows, right? So if the off diagonal nine and the off diagonal one switch position and then one and five switch position you're going to have two nine one up here in the first row and that corresponds to the first column so you're taking the columns and you're turning them into rows uh, <laughs> now actually implementing that is uh can be a little bit messy i'm going to show two different techniques to do that first uh, well, we are still, uh, you know, just accumulating at the end of the day. Um, let's see, what do I want to do here? I guess first I'll say n is equal to the length of the matrix. And I'm only doing that because I have to calculate, or, or rather I'm going to use a, a nested for loop here. For j in range n. So I just made n, so I wasn't calculating the length of the matrix twice. OK, so i, uh, for i in range n, this is going to be referring to the, col or to the rows of the original matrix. And then j is going to be referring to the columns. So you know when you take a matrix and um, let's see, let me just jump into a REPL here, make our matrix. I don't know why my copy paste button is not working today for some reason. That's been happening a lot. OK, so if you have a two dimensional list, uh, you access it using, uh, you know, square brackets. Uh, so, you know, the the element in the zeroth row in the first column or uh, column index one uh, is this element one right here. And if I make that two, that's going to be five. OK, so uh, the transpose is essentially taking a uh, matrix IJ and reassigning it uh, to a new matrix um, and it's going to be JI. So if I, uh, if I need to swap 
the one and the nine, uh, I just swapped those indices, right? So zero one gave me the one, this one right here, and one zero gave me the nine right here, where it's supposed to be, you know, these two elements are supposed to be swapped. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. I know this is a little bit of a word salad. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, so the first method I'm gonna use is uh, making a new row, and this is gonna be a little bit tricky, so make sure you understand what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm gonna try to explain it the best I can, but it is still not uh, super straightforward. <laughs> I. Okay, what's happening here? I is referring to the rows of the original matrix and J is referring to the columns of the original matrix. Uh, but at the same time, new row is being created for every I here. Uh, and this new row is going to be appended to result uh, after every inner for loop terminates. So new row um, is instantiated every time this for this outer for loop starts over, and then the inner for loop is going over the columns of the older matrix. Um, but that new J is corresponding to the new columns of the new. Oh God, I I don't even. Yeah, it's. Ah, geez, that's just a horrible explanation. There's really, it just. You just have to read this and try to figure out what's going on. There's really no easy way to explain it. This is, I think, uh, probably the worst way that you could probably do a transpose. So I'm just going to get rid of it. And I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to show you something else. Um, yeah, it's just, it's not easy to explain. It's not easy to implement. It's not easy to read. It's not easy to debug. It's just a bad solution, period. Um, so I'm not going to dwell any further on it. What I am going to do uh, is from copy import something called deep copy. You probably haven't heard of this yet. Uh, copy is a, a built-in module, so this isn't something that you need to install yourself, um, like using pip or conda. Uh, this, is, this comes with Python. Um, and it is a, a module that deals with uh, copying data structures. So hopefully you're already familiar with copy, like list.copy. Uh, but when you're dealing with nested data structures that consist of mutable objects, uh, you need to do something called deep copy, which uh, recursively copies all of the nested data structures inside of, of, of something like a matrix. So if we were to call, uh, gosh, I guess I should just... bite the bullet here and explain what I mean. So if I take uh, m copy is equal to matrix dot copy. Okay, so m copy is the same as the original matrix. Look what happens when I do this. Let's say m copy, uh, so row zero, the first row and the last element, let's make that Nine, 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 nine. And look what happened. I just referenced the original matrix, uh, but the original matrix was modified. Even though, you know, we copied into a brand new object, M copy, the fact that this happened is because we used uh, a single level of copying. Uh, and yeah, well, I'm not going to get super into the details here, um, but that's just something you need to know. Uh, for like nested mutable structures like this, you need to do something called deep copying where uh, each each sub item uh, in, in the nested data structure is also copied. Whereas this thing, this matrix.copy just copies the outer structure, uh, but the stuff inside is sort of the, the same. Um, yeah, it's... Well, it's very unintuitive the first time you come come across this. So from copy import deep copy and then deep copy. Uh, so we'll let's uh, hold on. 
maybe I'll make, I'll remake my matrix. Okay. And now M copy is going to be equal to a deep copy of matrix. And now I can say M copy zero. Uh, let's change another element two and uh, column one. So the last row, uh, second column is going to be a seven here. Let's just make sure I'm correct. Yep. And now let's reassign that to nine, 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 nine. And now let's go look at the original matrix and we can see that uh, that seven is still there. So we didn't mess with it, but now we have a new matrix with this element in there. So I had to do all of that because again, we're dealing with nested data structures, which are immutable or sorry, mutable because they're lists of lists. Okay. Let's see. Uh, instead of result, actually, I'm going to make a matrix, no, new matrix. How about equals a deep copy of matrix. And then uh, n is equal to len. I shouldn't have deleted that. So still going to need to use it. So for i in range n, for j in range n, a new matrix at position i, j is going to be equal to the old matrix at position j, i. Now this one is, I think, a lot easier to understand Oops, return new matrix. Can't talk and type at the same time. So yeah, this one I think is a lot easier to understand uh, because this is what uh, transpose does. It swaps the uh, rows with the columns. And so I here is going over the, the rows of the old matrix and J is going over the columns of the old matrix. And, uh, and we're just swapping the elements. Okay. And I can move this to the top of the file since that's where imports should go. And now I'll just show uh, that our transpose is working. And you might be wondering why I even bother doing any of this. Uh, and I'm going to get to that in a second. Okay, so we can see the first column was 291. After transposing, that becomes our first row, 291. 127 was the second column. That becomes our second row. Uh, and then 583. So you can see we're just uh, flipping this um, matrix along that or, or across that main diagonal. And the reason I did that is because I already have something that's going to take the rows of a matrix and sort them. Right. So I've taken the columns here and transformed them into rows. And now I can just pass that matrix, that transposed matrix into row sorter. It's going to sort you know, those rows. Um, and then what I can do is just transpose it back. And that is what I'm going to do for U and D where we need to sort by column. Uh, I guess I'll go in steps here. So first, um, transposed mate, oof, matrix is equal to transpose of the matrix. Uh, and then sorted uh, results is equal to row sorter. And then we're going to pass the transposed matrix and then the, uh, the, our, you know, reversal parameter here and then, uh, transposed back equals transpose of sorted result. And then we can return transposed and now what I'm going to do is just demonstrate that that is indeed doing what we wanted to do. Okay, so uh, if we do U, this sorting code U, it should sort each column in ascending order. So this should be, um, this column should be 1, 2, and 9. This column is going to stay the same at 1, 2, 7. This column is going to become 3, 5, 8. And I will show you that that is exactly what's happening. 1, 2, 9, 1, 2, 7, 3, 5, 8. Okay. So that was a lot easier to deal with than trying to take elements uh, and swap them around uh, sort of willy-nilly. Um, yeah, that would have been a nightmare trying to uh, like sort of leave, leave the matrix in its original format and then try to like move rows around or, or move 
individual elements uh, where they need to go. Yeah, that's awful. Um, and so we kind of got around all of that by just transposing the matrix. So turning it on its side, turning the columns into rows, sorting that by row, and then transposing it back or flipping it back. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Um, and that is our solution. I guess I can show uh, descending order as well. 921, 721, 853. So that's nice. Um, yeah, let's get rid of this. That's all kind of messy. And what we're going to do instead is just do all of those function calls in sort of one step, right? Because we don't need to store all of those interim results. So we're going to first transpose the matrix. Then that transposed matrix is going to be passed to row sorter. That's going to get sorted, and then it's going to be passed to transpose. Transpose is going to transpose it back into the, um, you know, the the original uh, orientation of the matrix, and then that's going to be returned. And actually, we can get rid of the else as well because this is a return statement right here. Um, and so, you know, if this branch didn't run, uh, the only thing left we have to do is just the other uh, type of sorting. So we can just leave the else statement off entirely and just have two returns here. And so we've cleaned up our code quite a bit. Um, it would have been an absolute nightmare trying to put all of that inside of the function itself. Um, and yeah. Uh, all right. So, wow, 26 minutes already. Yikes. Um, I'm going to take a, just a couple more minutes just to talk about some ways that we can make this even better. We can improve this, uh, especially this transpose. Even this is not particularly uh, easy to understand the first time. Uh, and I knew what I was doing because I have done this before. Uh, and I also, you know, this is also my like sixth take trying to make this video because <laughs> uh, I'm not running on a script. I'm just trying to sort of talk. Um, yeah, so I knew what I was doing going into this, um, but you didn't necessarily. And so trying to come up with this type of solution the first time is just, ugh, it's awful. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you a way, way, way cleaner solution, uh, which will not involve having to import anything. Okay, I'm going to put my matrix in here again, that copy. I don't know why that's not working. I guess my keyboard is uh, nearing end of life here. Okay, so we have this matrix. Uh, with the rows 215, 928, 173. And the transpose should be 291, 127, 583, right? Um, and the way that I'm going to do that is by, uh, let's see, how should I do this? For row in, I guess I'll do it the, the sort of most basic way first. Okay, so we're using zip, uh, and you've seen me use zip uh, many times at this point, uh, so you probably have gathered that I really, really like this function. It is very versatile. You can do a lot of really powerful things with it, uh, and if you're not familiar, zip takes uh, two or more sequences and sort of uh, pairs them up element by element. So you can see here we're taking matrix sub zero. That refers to this first sub uh, or to this first row and zipping it with matrix sub one, which is that second row and matrix sub two, which is the last row. And what it's gonna do is pair up each of the first elements, each of the second elements, and then each of the third elements here. You can see that that's what's happening. Tuple does return, or sorry, zip does return tuples. So you can see that this is a tuple, not a list, uh, but that doesn't matter. What matters is, look at that, we got a transpose without having to deal with any sort of messy, oh gosh, like nested for loops and switching indices and all of that stuff, we got our transpose just by doing a zip. Now we do need to kind of fix it up a little bit. You know, we want a list of lists, not um, a sequence of tuples like zip gives. Uh, and the other thing is that, 
you know, this is a little bit impractical if your matrix is, say, 100 by 100, right? That's, we don't want to do that. Um, and what I'm going to show you is um, okay, so I'm just going to cast zip to a list. And what I'm going to use is the unpacking operator to unpack all of the rows of the matrix into the zip object. So that's doing the exact same thing. Uh, unpack this asterisk operator when operating on a, an iterable sequence like this is going to sort of, uh, it's doing essentially this. It's taking each row individually and putting it into the zip as a separate argument. So we can unpack the matrix into zip and we get our, um, our new rows, which were previously the columns of the original matrix. And then one last thing. Um, oops, for top in zip. And now we have lists of lists. Um, and again, I'm using the star operator here. So top is this thing right here. It's coming from zip. It's going to be a tuple of objects. And all I'm doing is unpacking those objects into a new list object. Um, you know, this is the same as just essentially uh, uh, casting tup to the list type. It's doing the exact same thing, it's just that this uh, syntax is a little bit cleaner and it actually turns out to be a little bit faster uh, than casting to list. Right, okay, so there you go. There's, that's a matrix transpose right there. Bam, a single line of code. We don't have to deal with any of this stuff. We're just going to return this. That's um, that's pretty incredible, right? Uh, we've taken, and you know, yeah, we can get rid of this import statement now. There's nothing wrong with importing packages, but you know, it doesn't hurt to figure out how to wait, how to do things in in uh, ways that involve just using like the uh, the basic. Um, elements or uh, of of the core Python language here, without having to resort to extra functions and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's a transpose right there. Bam, done. And I'll run this again. I have to exit my interpreter, and we can see. Uh, let's see. We sorted by uh, the direction code D, which should be columns in descending order. So uh, the columns should be. 921, and we can see that we have 921 in the column. 721 for this column in descending order. Uh, and then 853. So we took, I mean, this is one of the, I think, more striking examples of ways in which you can use more advanced uh, tech, excuse me, advanced techniques in Python to massively reduce the amount of code that you have to write. And it also makes it a lot easier to reason about once, you know, this is kind of exotic uh, to beginners of the language, uh, to people that are new to Python. It's definitely very exotic. There's this comprehension thing that you may not be familiar with. And then there's this star operator. Um, but once you understand what those things do, this piece of code is a lot easier to, be, to reason about than what we had previously, which was... Uh, right here right that's it's a little bit better than what we had previously which was oh my gosh it was well that was a while ago and I have to go back and <laughs> Whoop, there it is right there <laughs> oh no it isn't now I'm just wasting time my dog is even sighing he's annoyed with me okay Whatever. That's that. The point I was trying to make is that we we took this solution, which was awful and ugly and should never see the light of day. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines of code. Into one line of code.
Sorry, I'm trying to type without being able to see my keyboard because the microphone is in the way. So that's why I make so many typos in case you were probably uh, screaming or pulling out your hair watching this video, very frustrated at me. All right. Yeah, so uh, hopefully this inspires you to uh, search for better ways to do things. Um, and yeah, this is the kind of the case that I wanted to make is that there are much better, much easier ways to do things in Python. And actually we could, we could do the same thing for row sorter. We can use a comprehension. And look at that. We have this very, very clean, uh, these two helper functions that are doing everything we need them to do in a single line of code. All right. Um, oh my gosh, 35 minutes. I'm so sorry. Hopefully uh, you stuck around and, and you were inspired by what I just showed you. Um, maybe I'm just talking to my dog at this point, but uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you in the next video. Uh, as always, feel free to reach out on Slack if you have any questions.